Today, the New South Wales Premier, Gladys Berejiklian, announces a resignation amid an anti-corruption inquiry. Resigning at this time is against every instinct in my being and something which I do not want to do. I love my job and I love serving the community, but I have been given no option following the statement that's been issued today. Also today, Australia's ban on international travel to be lifted within weeks. More than 1,100 new COVID-19 infections in Victoria as the ACT sets a new daily case record. And the cleanup continues in parts of the New South Wales Central West after a tornado left a trail of destruction. Good afternoon, Dan Borshaw with ABC News from Ngunnawal Country in Canberra. We start this afternoon with the New South Wales Premier's bombshell announcement that she is quitting Parliament. Gladys Berejiklian says an investigation by the Independent Commission Against Corruption left her no option but to resign. I've had to make an extremely difficult decision overnight, but one which I feel obliged to do because of the love and respect I have for the people of New South Wales and the high regard with which I have for the Office of Premier. I was advised late yesterday afternoon the Independent Commission Against Corruption will today uh, release a public statement in which it will state it is investigating allegations made about me concerning matters relating to the former member for Wagga Wagga. As it is clear from the ICAC statement, the issues which it is investigating are historic matters that have already been the subject of numerous attacks on me by political opponents in the last 12 months. Many of the matters were the subject of questions I was asked by the opposition while appearing before an estimates committee hearing early this year. I want to be very clear. In all the decisions I have ever made as a minister or as Premier of New South Wales, my first consideration has always been the wellbeing and welfare of the people of this state. I state categorically I've always acted with the highest level of integrity. History will demonstrate that I've always executed my duties, again, with the highest level of integrity for the benefit of the people of New South Wales, who I have had the privilege to serve. As the leader of the New South Wales Government, I have expected the highest standards of myself and my colleagues. I have made it clear on numerous occasions that if any of my ministers were the subject of allegations being investigated by an integrity agency or law enforcement, then he or she should stand aside during the course of the investigation until their name was cleared. The reason for my stance was not to have made any presumptions as to their conduct, but rather to maintain the integrity of the public office which, has held, which that person has held whilst an investigation was completed. That same standard must always apply to me also as the Premier. However, standing aside is not an option for me as the Premier of New South Wales. The people of this state need certainty as to who their leader is during the challenging times of the pandemic. I cannot predict how long it will take the ICAC to complete this investigation, let alone deliver a report in circumstances where I was first called to give evidence at a public hearing nearly 12 months ago. Therefore, it pains me to announce that I have no option but to resign from the Office of Premier. My resignation will take effect as soon as the New South Wales Liberal Party can elect a new parliamentary leader. In order to allow the new leader and government a fresh start, I'll also resign from the New South Wales Parliament once I've consulted the Electoral Commission on appropriate timing for a by-election given the COVID restrictions. My resignation as Premier could not occur at a worse time, but the timing is completely outside of my control as the ICAC has chosen to take this action during the most challenging weeks of the most challenging times in the state's history. That is the ICAC's prerogative. Resigning at this time is against every instinct in my being and something which I do not want to do. I love my job and I love serving the community, but I have been given no option following the statement that's been issued today. To continue as Premier would disrupt the state government during a time when our entire attention should be focused on the challenges confronting New South Wales. I do not want to be a distraction from what should be the focus of the state government during this pandemic, which is the wellbeing of our citizens. It always has been and always will be. Notwithstanding the challenges of the last few years and few months in particular, I have never felt stronger nor more confident in my leadership. I have absolutely no regrets during my time in public life. At times we all stumble, we pick ourselves up, we dust ourselves off and start again stronger and wiser than before. I have done this many times, as we all have. My only regret will be not to be able to finish the job to ensure the people of New South Wales transition to living freely with COVID. However, I'm extremely confident that whoever succeeds me will be more than capable to continue this job. 
please give them your trust and confidence. We will come through this period stronger, more resilient and appreciating what really matters in life. I feel strong, energised and optimistic about the future of New South Wales. I want to thank the thousands of our frontline heroes who've kept us safe and kept us going during the darkest days in our state's history. I owe you and the state owes you a huge debt of gratitude. Nothing that we can say or do will be able to demonstrate the significance all of our frontline workers have had during this difficult time. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the Liberal Party to whom I owe my career, the people of the electorate of Willoughby who have elected me five times to be their parliament, to be their member of parliament, my parliamentary colleagues for their support and hard work, my outstanding and loyal staff past and present, and to all the professional public servants with whom I have worked. I also want to thank my family and friends who provided me with unconditional support and understanding when I have not been able to be present due to my responsibilities. Most importantly, I want to thank you, the people of New South Wales. When the chips were down in the past few years, in particular during the drought or the bushfires and now COVID, we stood alongside each other. We've grieved and supported each other during these tragedies. I hope you know that you will remain foremost in my thoughts. The courage that you display in your lives every day has inspired me every step of the way. The courage and the support you've shown me has humbled me and made me a better leader and a better person. Serving you has been the greatest privilege of my life. Please know that every day I gave it my all and worked as hard as I could to create a better future for our state and its people. I truly believe that New South Wales is a place where every person, irrespective of their background and circumstances, has the opportunity to be their best to make a difference. So as I address you for the final time as your Premier, please stay the course and stay safe. We will be shortly out of this lockdown and be able to go down with our lives. New South Wales and its people will come out of this lockdown stronger and together we will build a future full of optimism and hope. Finally, thank you again for giving me the honour of being your Premier. Thank you very much.